So full time at Kingspan, Brefney Park in Cavan, and it's Kilmoco Croaks who advance to the All Ireland Club Senior Football Championship final. They'll be joining Kilku, who won earlier today, of course, with that five point win over St. Finbars. It was Kilmoco Croaks who progressed into the final. They beat uh, Podrick Pierce's of Roscommon by a scoreline of 111 to eight points. And um, yeah, you know, Kilmoco Croaks and Kilku were probably the two favourites going into the semi finals. Both were close games. You know, opposition teams definitely had their moments, but Kim Wilco Croaks without doubt the deserved victors in this game, without doubt the better team on the day. The first half was um yeah, it was a bit septic at times, really, wasn't it? It was a hard, it was a hard watch. I think the most exciting thing about that first half was when the halftime whistle went because we had a bit of a a bit of a fight at halftime and Pat Flanagan throwing a few shapes and uh and whatnot it definitely made for a bit of entertainment there but um second half this game definitely came to life and you're actually hoping that that little scuffle at halftime and handbags and all the rest it might actually wake Podrick Pierce's up a bit because I don't know what it was in the first half I thought they were they were trying to play too direct they were trying to kick into that inside line too much and they were trying to create goal opportunities I thought they needed to work it out wide and be a bit more patient on the ball uh, get the ball into your shooter's hands and try create scoring opportunities for points they seemed very fixated on going for are trying to create goal opportunities. They couldn't really find themselves in situations where they could kick for points. So um, that was a little bit disappointing from Podrick Pierce's point of view. But um, obviously we missed the opening 10 minutes because of the fact that the uh, previous semi-final between Kilcue and St. Finbars went to extra time. But I did get a glimpse of Craig Diaz's early goal uh, in the open, I think in the seventh or eighth minute. A very well taken goal, to be fair. Worked inside. Diaz carries on his run, gets on the ball and... Uh, slots it with the inside of his right boot. Looked like it went between the uh, the keeper's legs or sort of went through him. Not too sure what happened there, but ends up going in the back of the net and um, Kim Michael Croaks had that early lead. 1-1 to a point, I think it was, at that stage. So, yeah, like really nothing much else happened in the first half. Like a couple of sloppy passes. Just wasn't... It wasn't a great watch in all honesty and you were definitely waiting for this game to burst into life. And um, you were wondering where Podrick Pierce is going to take a few more risks, maybe shoot from distance a bit more, try and create a couple of more opportunities. And uh, in the second half, they did, to be fair, like definitely in the third quarter, they were probably the better team. But even at that, even when they did come out, come out on top and start kicking a couple of points from the likes of Hubert Darcy, Paul Carey, Niall Daly as well, in particular, really stood up. Croaks had the answers and they kept going down the other end and just chipping away with a score here and there. And that is the most impressive thing, I think, from a Kilmichael Croaks point of view, is that even when they aren't playing well, they still keep the scoreboard ticking over. They still go down the other end and kick a point or two. And it means that even when they're having bad patches in their games, they are still able to, uh, control, you know, they're, they're still in front. They still have a lead and they're still, you know, in contention, um, winning the game that they're playing in. Um, and yeah, you know, um, Podrick Pierce has started to come back into it kicked a couple of points. But realistically speaking, you always you always felt that Croaks were in control of this game. Like, not on a month of Sundays, really, where Podrick Pierce is going to come back and win this. Like, you always felt the chemical Croaks were um, in control of this. And really, the big sort of turning point, I think, in this game was obviously the final 10 to 15 minutes when chemical Croaks make and Robbie Brennan makes two big changes. Ben Shovelin was one of the players who came off. Uh, Keen O'Connor comes on. Casey comes on as well. And uh, Keen O'Connor with two fantastic points. Again, you know, this is the super sub of the super subs in, in many ways. And uh, one would wonder, could he maybe have a super sub role with the dubs at some point? Maybe because, uh, you know, he came off the bench against St. Jude's in the final and, and scored a goal. He came off the bench against Nace and got a goal as well. And he came, comes off the bench in this game and scores two points again. You know, I think him and Croaks were, were largely in control and would have won the game anyway. But those two points just made a massive, massive difference. And uh, Casey gets a point as well. Quinn on the score sheet. Absolutely brilliant stuff there. And, um, you know, it, it was dead and buried from there, really going down the home stretch. I think Podrick Pierce has just really ran out of energy. And um, it was hard to see. With Obviously, there was a lot of replays of a lot of the points. So you couldn't see a lot of the restarts. But when uh, footage would go back to the game, you'd see Kilmichael Croaks on the ball. So it looked like Padre Pierce's kickouts were just breaking down massively in the final 10 to 15 minutes. And that's probably where it, it ultimately went wrong from their point of view. But look, they, they came through Connacht and they can hold their heads high. They, they did a great year in that respect. Not many people really fancy them to come through Connacht with 
the likes of Knock Moore and, and Mount Belly my lock in there, and they came through both of them. Um, but it wasn't meant to be. I suppose from a Kilmaco Croak's point of view, like Craig Diaz was exceptional in my opinion, one one, and and yet again just um, brilliant around midfield, very controlled performance, slows it down when he needs to, and just finds himself in the right positions, found himself in the right position for the goal, and um, even for that late point as well. That was a really well taken point. So you know, hitting one one from midfield is is very impressive stuff, and I thought he was uh, absolutely excellent, no doubt about that, and. Obviously, Rory O'Carroll wins man of the match on TG Cahar. I would have given it to Diaz personally, but I think um, I think O'Carroll was was very impressive as well because uh, Podrick Pierce just couldn't really break past that half back line at all. They could, they very rarely got past that half back line, and it was you know one of the key ingredients to that was because of Rory O'Carroll and how I suppose well defensive defensively well defensive performance that he gave um, and also picking passes out in front of him as well was was equally as impressive and um, yeah you know no man you no problem for Kilmoco Croaks you know they uh, what do they have there eight different scores today in total so um, you know they're finding options they're finding ways to score uh, even Dan O'Brien didn't score today but he's a player that can contribute with a couple of points as well and Shane Cunningham and a few other players so They've a lot of options, Kilmoco Croaks, and even without Paul Mannion, they have a serious chance now going into that All Ireland club final. They really do, and uh, it is interesting because Croaks and Kilku, like Kilku, are, are far more of a defensive side, but they also have a lot of similarities in terms of now that now with the fact that Paul Mannion isn't in that Kilmoco Cro Croaks team because he's injured, and now like you have two teams that really don't rely on individual talents, and um, you know you're going to have a lot of scores on that day potentially as well, so. And with it being in Crow Park, it should make for a very interesting watch. It really should. Um, I suppose from Podrick Pierce's, Paul Carey with three points, Noel, da Noel Daly with two points, Hubert Darcy with two points, and Butler in there with a point as well. And yeah, it just didn't offer enough, I don't think, in the uh, in the final third, really. And um, in that final quarter, they were outscored by five points to zero. So really didn't offer anything at all. And yeah. Um, you know, as I said, the, the start of this game was really poor. They didn't really get going at all in the first half. So they gave themselves a lot to do really going into the second half. And even when they had that bright spark of looking like they were turning it around, Kilmaco Croaks were still chipping away at the opposite end of the pitch with a couple of points. Um, and I think that was the uh, the killer, bro, killer, killer blow, really, from a Kilmaco Croaks point of view. Like even Darren Mullen hit, hit a couple of points. Uh, Shane Horan got a point as well, I remember. So... Yeah, not meant to be for Podrick Pierce's, but Croaks marching on into the final. And let me know down in the comments below who you think will win that game on the 12th of February in Crow Park. But the fact that it's in Crow Park, it might maybe favour Kilmaco Croaks. But then again, Kilku did play there before when they played Corofin in that um, All Ireland Club final, and they nearly won it. So, you know, they, they have plenty of experience of playing there as well. So it should be. Uh, it should be an interesting final. But yeah, look, listen, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. If you could leave a like and subscribe. If you haven't, if you have subscribed, very much appreciate it. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the Dublin Armagh match reaction, uh, which will be out a little bit later. So stay tuned for that. My name's Aaron, and I'll see you all in the next one.